Tech salaries are shifting, layoffs are happening, and AI is changing everything. So is your job going to be at risk? Today, let's talk about what's really happening with the tech salaries, and more importantly, can you stay ahead? Let's tackle the big question first. Are tech salaries actually going down? I'm going to be pulling data from the Salary Trends Report by DICE, which breaks down what's happening in the industry. Between 2019 and 2021, we saw salaries shoot up nearly 9% fueled by a tech boom. Now, I have experienced this boom directly when I was tasked to create a new engineering office for WhatsApp in London. We grew from zero to 100 engineers in less than two years. It is the most hiring I have ever done in my career. It was surely an exciting time, but as you all know, things started to cool off. In 2023, the average salary went down a little bit to $111,000. It's only a $155 drop in average, but with the inflation, it can feel like you have much less money. Another thing to consider is that salaries do usually go up and down. It's pretty normal if you look back at the history. Now, if you're new here, I'm Jean and I've been in tech for 20 years. And personally, this is the third recession that I have experienced in Silicon Valley. I've seen the dot-com crash in 2000, the 2008 housing crash. Now we're experiencing another slowdown in tech. Each time, the causes and the impact are slightly different, but most experts would say that these ups and downs are part of a cycle. However, there is one major curveball this time around, which is AI. Unlike the past slowdowns, which were more caused by temporary problems, AI could change the whole industry in ways that we have never experienced before. And this time, it doesn't look like AI is going away. AI has been automating tasks, optimizing processes, and quickly shifting demand for a lot of jobs. The big question we want to ask is, will the tech industry recover like it has always done before, or is this time really different because of AI? According to the Future of Jobs report, out of 673 million jobs in the world, we're expected to see a net loss of 14 million jobs in the next five years, which is about 2% of the current job market. Now, this includes potential creation of 69 million new jobs due to AI, meaning the difference between new jobs and the disappearing jobs will be 40 million jobs less. And no one can really know for sure what is going to happen in the future. But one thing that's clear is that AI is changing the job market including tech jobs. If we look more closely at the job loss, apparently it's affecting the younger workers more, especially those who have less than five years of work experience. The interesting part is that for people with more than five years of experience, the situation is completely different. In fact, the salaries for people with over five years of experience have actually gone up. If you have 10 or more years of experience, you're probably seeing a steady salary growth despite the market ups and downs. So what does this mean for you? Well, experience is important. The longer you've worked in the field, the better you can handle the tough economic times. Even when companies are cutting back on the entry-level jobs, they're still willing to pay extra for the experienced workers. So for the new engineers, the sooner you start working and gaining experience, the better off you'll be in the future. And this isn't really new. I remember during the 2008 market crash, many new graduates were called the lost generation because it was really hard to find jobs for them. But slowly, the market did recover and things eventually went back to normal. As the economy goes up and down, experience and hard work usually pays off. Unfortunately, it's going to be really tough for new engineers right now. And if you want tips on getting a job in tech and breaking into AI, check out my other videos. I'll link them somewhere here. Another thing that you can do is keep an eye out on the trends and to make sure you're in the right industry and developing the right skills. So let's take a look at where the money in tech is right now. There are industries where pay has been increasing even in the tough times. At the top of the list is aerospace and defense with an average salary of $131,000. Following are software engineering at $131,000 and biotech at $128,000. These industries are still doing really well through the economic slowdown. In fourth and fifth place are finance and consulting, industries that have historically been doing well through the economic changes. 
Well, not all industries are doing well. There is hospitality, travel, and internet services, which is seeing the biggest salary cuts of more than 11%. And industries like construction, consumer products, and real estate are also struggling as demand and salaries in those areas are going down. Now, earlier in the video, I said we're starting with the macro perspective and going to be drilling in. So let's dig into which individual roles are seeing the highest salaries. According to the latest data by DICE, number five on the list is product managers, making an average of $130,000. Number four is cybersecurity engineers at $140,000. Number three is principal software engineers at $145,000, followed by program managers at $148,000. On top of the list is solutions architects, making an average of $158,000. The DICE report shows that the highest paying jobs are all about helping companies with big projects and changing to digital technology. Whether it's solution architect, principal software, or product managers, these jobs do need people who have both technical skills and leadership skills to lead through these big changes. So in order to land these high paying jobs, you want to focus on learning the right skills. And lucky for you, I have analyzed 150 job postings on LinkedIn and made a free PDF guide that lists the top technical skills that companies are actually looking for for 12 popular job roles like data science, web development, software engineering, and even AI engineering. You can download it for free to make sure you're learning the right skills for your future career. But on top of the technical skills, you also want to develop management and leadership skills. And this is still true even if you don't want to necessarily be a manager. If you look at the list, most of the high paying roles like solution architect or principal software engineers will be leading other engineers and working with cross-functional teams. Adaptability is also key as tech is always changing. Being able to quickly learn new tools and languages and work in different environments is going to be important to stay competitive in the future. Now, if you want to learn more about what other career paths are out there in AI, watch my video on the 12 technical and non-technical AI jobs out there right here. Otherwise, YouTube thinks you should watch this one next. I'll see you there.